distinguished delegate is ignorant. I thank the delegation from Zimbabwe for that statement. This libelous report does not deserve any respect or credibility. Madam, a significant contribution that you might make, and that would be by quitting. Thank you to the delegate of Cuba for his statement. The one who has monopoly on the violation of the human rights is Israel, the darling of the United States, and now we are discovering also the darling of the ambassador of Canada and the darling of the High Commissioner. Thank the Ambassador of Palestine for this statement. Incidents of violence against uh, women have been exaggerated. I'd like to thank the delegation of Sudan for that statement. Estonian under Sharia law for unnatural sexual acts should not be equated with extrajudicial killings and indeed should not have featured in the report. Hezbollah is also everyday simple people resisting. I thank the ambassador of Cuba for his statement. The Tehran conference is not about denial of Holocaust. It is rather than an academic one. I thank the representative of Iran for that statement. There is an Israeli Holocaust against Palestinian people on a daily basis. I thank the representative of Iran for that statement. Killed, massacred by the invading forces who have come from the planet Mars, which they now call the Israeli occupier. I thank the delegation of the Syrian Arab Republic for its statement. Massacres against the displaced people, women and children, those were deliberate acts uh, by the Israeli uh, war planes. Thank you for that statement. Deliberate massacres of civilian populations took place. I thank Mr. Jean Ziegler for his additional report. The Holocaust is going on and it is it is an Israeli holocaust against the Palestinian people. I thank the Ambassador of Palestine for his statement. A continuación, el uso de la palabra un representante de United Nations Watch. Thank you, Mr. President. Six decades ago, in the aftermath of the Nazi horrors, Eleanor Roosevelt, René Cassin, and other eminent figures gathered here on the banks of Lake Geneva to reaffirm the principle of human dignity. They created the Commission on Human Rights. Today we ask, what has become of this noble dream? In this session, we see the answer. Faced with compelling reports from around the world of torture, persecution, and violence against women, what has this council pronounced? What has it decided? Nothing. Its response has been silence. Its response has been indifference. Its response has been criminal. One might say, in Harry Truman's words, that this has become a do-nothing, good-for-nothing council. But that would be inaccurate. This council has, after all, done something. It has enacted one resolution after another, condemning one single state, Israel. In eight pronouncements, and there will be three more this session, Hamas and Hezbollah have been granted impunity. The entire rest of the world, millions upon millions of victims in 191 countries, continue to go ignored. So yes, this council has done something. And the Middle East dictators who orchestrate this campaign will tell you it is a very good thing and that they seek to protect human rights, Palestinian rights. So too, the racist murderers of Darfur women, the rapists of Darfur women, tell us they care about the rights of Palestinian women. The occupiers of Tibet care about the occupied. And the butchers of Muslims in Chechnya care about Muslims. But do these self-proclaimed defenders truly care about Palestinian rights? Let us consider the past few months. More than 130 Palestinians were killed by Palestinian forces. This is three times the combined total that were the pretext for calling special sessions in July and November. Yet the champions of Palestinian rights, Ahmadinejad, Assad, Gaddafi, John Dugard, 
say nothing. Little three-year-old boy Salam Balusha and his two brothers were murdered in their car by Prime Minister Haniyeh's troops. Why has this council chosen silence? Because, because Israel could not be blamed. Because, in truth, the despots who run this council couldn't care less about Palestinians or about any human rights. They seek to demonize Israeli democracy, to delegitimize the Jewish state, to scapegoat the Jewish people. They also seek something else, to distort and pervert the very language and idea of human rights. You ask, what has become of the founder's dream of Eleanor Roosevelt, of René Cassin, of John Humphrey, P.C. Chang, Charles Malik, who assembled here in Geneva 60 years ago? Mr. President, with terrible lies and moral inversion, this council is turning that dream into a nightmare. Thank you, Mr. President. For, primera vez. for the first time in the session, I will not express thanks for that statement. I shall point out to the distinguished representative of the organization that just spoke, the distinguished representative of United Nations Watch. If you'd kind of listen to me, I am sorry that I'm not in a position to thank you for your statement. I should mention that I will not tolerate any similar statements in the Council. The way in which members of this Council were referred to, and indeed the way in which the Council itself was referred to, all of this is inadmissible in the memory of the persons that you referred to founders of the Human Rights Commission and for the good of human rights, I would urge you in any future statements to observe some minimum uh, proper conduct and language. Otherwise, we'll, any statements you make in similar tones to those used today will be taken out of the records.